Today we'll be talking about company setup here in the UAE. Um, I'll introduce our two panelists and speakers. Um, firstly, Ramel Gums, who is our business setup manager. Uh, ramel has been with us a number of years and uh, leads uh, the business setup team. And we've also got Zach, uh, who is one of our senior business setup advisors, uh, who's also been with us uh, just over a year as well. Um, Ramel, Zach, thank you very much for joining us for what should be a very interesting discussion. Thanks, Alistair, and welcome everyone. Fantastic. I think time is 2.02. We're live on Facebook. Um, we've got about 60 people connected. Um, so let's get going. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon to everyone and welcome to another one of Creative Zone's webinars. Uh, today we are talking about all things business setup here in the UAE. We'll be covering the different types of company setup options that you're faced with, as well as the various jurisdictions, a little bit about pricing, and of course, how Creative Zone can assist you on your entrepreneurial and business journey here in the UAE. My name is Alistair Payne. I'm the business setup manager here at Creative Zone. I'm filling in today for our CEO, Lorenzo, who unfortunately can't be with us. And we're joined as well by Ramel and Zach. Um, we like to keep these sessions as interactive as possible. So I would invite everyone to please post your questions, either in the Q&A box or in the comments box as well. We will hope to get through all questions and if our tech team can also put our email addresses, as well as details of landing pages where you can also leave your details and one of our representatives will get in touch with you following uh, the session. So fantastic, Let, let's get started. Um, business setup here in the UAE. Um, firstly, let me talk, tell you a little bit about Creative Zone. Creative Zone were, was founded in 2010. We are a privately owned company, company formation, residency visa processing, is what we specialize in, but what we also specialize and have concentrated very heavily on in the past few years is helping entrepreneurs, helping businesses not only set up, but expand their presence and scale their business here in the UAE as well. So we help entrepreneurs with visa processing, with tax and accounting support, legal support, personal concierge services, um, everything and everything in between. Business setup is just the beginning. It's one of our slogans and catchphrases because it really is just that. Um, today, we're gonna to be talking about all things business setup here in the UAE. Um, please post your questions, your comments, um, and we'll be happy to get through them one by one. Um, Ramel, let me start with you. Um, firstly, let's probably the easiest question of the day. Why Dubai? Why the UAE? Why should any entrepreneur, business owner that's joining us Think about setting up their company here in the UAE. You say the easiest question when it's as hot as it is at the moment. You might you might think against that, but um, in terms of Dubai, it's just that from a personal standpoint, obviously, very luxurious lifestyle, a lot of things to do, um, very diverse um, set of people. You know, people come from all over the globe. Like you said, we've got a lot of clients from India, South Africa, Europe, UK, the US, because there's so many different countries that sort of come to Dubai to do business, not just because of the sort of lifestyle that they can live, but the connectivity around the globe. You know, it, it's, it's very close in sort of proximity to a lot of different countries. It's a trading hub. Um, and a lot of people travel through, through Dubai via other countries. Um, not to mention, obviously, setting up a company here is very, um, I would say, tax efficient, um, which a lot of people sort of look at, look towards very early and obviously coming here. But also just the ease of business, you know, things have developed a lot. And I've noticed this in my 10 years of being in the UAE, you know, things like um, obviously the way that different companies are operating, um, obviously the smart solutions that are coming around, everything is so accessible, so much easier than it was even just 10 years ago. Um, so it's an ever evolving country, growing in um, sort of diversity. Um, and with the global situation at the moment, there's a lot of global instability. Um, and me being here in the UAE, us obviously seeing figures of people setting up companies here, um, and the way that you're seeing sort of the growth in the region, shopping malls are still full. The way that they've handled the pandemic has been great because they haven't had to shut down so much. Um, I think they got to it very early and that sort of set the tone and obviously made sure that everyone was vaccinated very, very quickly. Um, so huge benefits of living in, in the UAE. Um, I'm raising a family here. I know that a lot of people are and a lot of people tend to think they're going to be here for a year or so, um, but then start forging a life here, uh, which is obviously the most important thing. 
Yeah, fantastic. Uh, great points, Ramel. And, and, and like yourself, I, I've been, lived here myself many years. The safety, security, and just the ease of, of not only uh, living here, but doing business as well, um, I think are, are all really valid points. And I think the UAE, as you correctly said, has handled the pandemic exemplary. I think it's been one of the best responses worldwide to the pandemic. We were certainly one of the first economies to really open up. We were one of the first cities and, and countries in the world to open our land and, and sea borders as well. So, so no great points. Uh, Zach, let me come to you next. Business setup here in the UAE. We know that there are many options. I'm sure many people tuning in have, have tried to find some of the answers themselves online. What options are entrepreneurs faced with? Could you tell us a little bit about what business setup options there are, um, and and what and how we, how we can help um, how we can help execute those setups? Yeah, certainly. Good afternoon, everyone. First off, and, and thanks everyone for, for joining us. Um, so I suppose I'll, I can I can break it down. Following on from from uh, Ramel's answer, it's an incredibly diverse set of jurisdictions here. There's thousands and thousands of business activities, and I appreciate that that if searching for it online, it, it gets a little difficult, which is why we're, we're here as, as an entity. We try and simplify it for our clients and as, as simple as ABC of, of how to guide you through it, as well as sort of hold that, hand holding you through that. Um, so the jurisdictions in the UAE can be broken down into two categories, what, first of which is a mainland or an onshore formation. Now, this is via the DED or the Department of Economic Development. This is a jurisdiction that is mainly aimed at perhaps denser structures. What I mean by that is, is physical office space that could be anywhere throughout Dubai. Um, certain activities such as that require um, what's called an external approval from certain municipalities, such as, for an example, if you're setting up a, a taxi company, for example, you need an RTA, a road traffic authority approval. Um, there's also, as I say, a lot, it's mainly aimed at a large amount of visas and, and ease of, of doing things surrounding that. The secondary jurisdiction, which I'm sure most people are, especially if searching online, most people are familiar with is what's called a free zone, or it's considered an offshore formation. There are a huge amount of free zones here, and they're all uh, dedicated to set very different things and, and um, set up in very different ways to uh, adhere to, to very different clients. And this is where we, we come in to say, look, Here's how we could do it. We assess what your business plan is. We see how we can sort of retrofit this with a few options. We've defined it down to one option, explain our reasoning behind that. And then once you say, yeah, let's go ahead, then we guide you through the whole process. So it can be as simple as two jurisdictions, but as I say, it can also be as, as, as expansive as thousands and thousands of business activities. So I would say it's on a per application basis that we can really get into the details, but there is, as I say, a huge amount of opportunity here. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Zach. Um, please, to all the attendees, please put your questions in the Q&A box. Please put your questions in the comments. If there's anything you would like us to speak about specifically regarding business setup or just general life here in the UAE, please do ask away. Um, we like to keep these sessions as interactive as possible. Um, so, Ramel, coming back to you, we, we've heard a little bit there about business setup options. Tell us a little bit about pricing. How much can an entrepreneur or business owner expect to pay to set up their company here? Yeah, um, in terms of pricing, there's a lot of variations depending on the type of setup that you do. Um, and this happens a lot. We, we sort of get questions and people have a sort of an understanding of what sort of price there is. Um, prices can start from as low as 5,750 dirhams for a zero visa license in one of the free zones. Um, and obviously a mainland license is more expensive starting from 23K, but just because there was a 5,750 option doesn't mean that your license is going to cost 5,750. You know, there's, there's a lot of different free zones that have different pricing, um, and depending on the activity, you may need to go to a certain free zone to set up your company. Um, and also once you add a visa to that, you have a lot of other elements that need to be paid. So for example, immigration card, e-channel registration, change of status, medical, um, many different things and factors. And then like Zach mentioned in the previous comments that you have certain approvals that you might have to pay. So the prices can vary a lot, but they are a lot more cost effective than they used to be. I know mainland um, particularly has, has come down a lot in price. There's no longer a requirement for a local sponsor for a lot of the activities. So that can bring down the price a lot. Obviously co-working setups as well means that you don't have to rent an office space in a lot of different jurisdictions. So there's a lot more flexible options when it comes to pricing, but starting from 5,750, 5, but I wouldn't um, bank on it that your setup would cost that low. Um, and mainly license 23K. Excellent, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ramel. So 
5,750 for, for anyone wanting uh, UA Durham in, in US dollars, that's approximately 1,005, 1,600, and around 20,000 dirhams is approximately five to 6,000 US dollars um, for anyone wondering dollars. Thank you, Ramel. Um, moving on to sectors and uh, Zach, what sectors are you currently seeing businesses being set up in? We know over COVID there's been a big boom in, in online businesses, but tell us if you would, what sort of sectors you're seeing uh, a lot of businesses set up in? Yeah, definitely. To echo that, a, a huge amount, particularly over COVID, being a, a driving factor of this of online business. I think in the, in the past few years, people have really realized the expansiveness of e-commerce, for example, being able to sell things particularly drop shipping is, is an idea where you don't even have to hold stock or inventory. These, these sorts of things have become more and more prevalent as COVID has sort of unfortunately expanded, but I suppose you could take advantage of that by, by doing these. But I think in, in the, the recent particularly two years, there's been a real boom in e-commerce being the primary market, perhaps also consultancies, uh, particularly management consultancies to advise businesses on how to structure themselves in these changing times. I think particularly adapting to these, these new times, things like working from home, how to structure certain staffing, these sorts of things are, are the two main sectors. I would say consultancy and e-commerce or, e e or online businesses, these, these two booming factors, incredibly prevalent. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Zach. So we're getting a couple of, of good questions here. Vikash is asking, where can I see the number of incorporation jurisdiction-wise in the Middle East? Uh, there is no mastered list. Um, but you can get various pieces of information from licensing authorities' website, DD, Department of Economic Development, or the mainland licensing jurisdiction. They publish uh, incorporation numbers on a quarterly basis. Um, or Vikash, please do get in touch with us. We'd be happy to, to share some of our experience and our knowledge as well. Um, question for you, Ramel. Is it possible to remotely open a business bank account after the business is set up? Yeah, so great question. And, and this is something that we're always dealing with for a lot of different clients, because as most people mentioned, and probably the reason why we get a lot of questions when it comes to banking is banking is the most, I would say, tedious and difficult part of the process of setting up a company, um, not just for time, but also processing. Um, so we have a team that can assist our clients with opening up a bank account. Um, and the answer to the question is at some stage, you will definitely have to be present to open up a bank account here, particularly in the first um, first meeting with the banker. You can utilize power of attorneys and stuff like that, um, but there's obviously a cost to that as well. Um, so what I would recommend is utilizing our concierge team, meeting with the bankers in the first meeting, and then the client can then say, for instance, if they're abroad, if they're not living in the UAE, they can travel home and our concierge team can follow on with the process. Um, but to start with, it makes sense. Well, someone that is on the company, at least one of the shareholders, um, or someone has to have power of attorney for that company. Um, so the answer to the question is to start a process. Yes, someone needs to be here, um, but we can handle the process moving forward um, and obviously taking the company along with getting the bank account open. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Ramel. And, and you touched on a good point there about our concierge team and, and the whole value addition that Credit Zone offer, not just for business setup, but post setup services as well. And as you correctly said, banking is probably one of the most challenging aspects of, of getting your company up and running and operational. Our concierge team have a, a whole team inside working on bank account opening. Uh, we have relationships with all the major local banks as well. So anyone who perhaps has already set up their business who's tuning in, please do get in touch with us if you need some help opening a bank account, we'd be happy to assist. Um, Zach, question for you. Do you need to file annual financial statements as a Fujera FZ LLC? But I'll also open that question a bit broader. Do you have to file financial statements as a free zone company? So great question. Now, as we've seen moving uh, moving backwards and, and currently, there are certain free zones that do require this, uh, such as Ras Al-Khaima, but for the majority, free zones do not require any annual auditing. Now, there are two factors to take into account for this. Now, one is in the future. So Dubai is currently proposing a 9% a corporate taxation in 2023, which may see the requirement for auditing to be done on an annual basis, but certainly, now, uh, certainly in future. As of right now, there is no annual auditing whatsoever. The second factor to take into account is VAT. Now, it's quite a minor thing. I think everyone globally is, is quite familiar with VAT. It works on a threshold basis, 
and it's a revenue target. So once you surpass $100,000 of revenue through your company, you would need to start taking into, taking into account VAT of registering for what's called a TRN, a tax registration number. Now, we can fully assist with this. We have a dedicated team in, in tax and accounting for UAE uh, taxation for this purpose. They can assist with the TRN, registration, registration and also advisory posts, uh, post registrations. We can fully assist with this as well as into next year, 2023. We are very much ready to assist with annual auditing when the corporate tax gets introduced. Excellent. <clears throat> Thank you, Zach. Um, and again, a very good point with regards to tax and accounting support, as Zach correctly said, corporate tax is being introduced into the UAE as of next year, 2023. Um, there's certainly some preparation some businesses will need to undergo to be ready for corporate tax. Creative Zone have a sister company, Creative Zone Tax and Accounting, that can cater to all of your tax and accounting requirements, as well as any other additional ESR requirements as well. Um, and any questions on these point uh, on these points, please do get in touch with either me or, or one of the team. Um, Ramel, back to you. We've got a question here. Can you also walk us through a crypto trading cost? Crypto companies and, and companies involved in trading cryptocurrencies are incredibly popular. I know you have extensive experience yourself setting up these sort of entities. So tell us a bit about setting up a, a crypto trading entity and the sort of costs and, and requirements involved. Sure. So when it comes to, to crypto, there's many different aspects of this. There's trading, obviously some people doing coaching, advisory services when it comes to this. The, the, the main issue that clients have when it comes to setting up a company with regards to crypto is that it's not regulated here by the banks in the UAE. Um, so when it comes to setting up a company to trade crypto, it's very, very difficult. Now you can set up a company for crypto to sort of advise, maybe create wallets, um, and that sort of stuff. But when it comes to trading, people are still having to trade via their personal account. Um, uh, so it's still quite tricky from that perspective. If you're looking to trade the crypto, what a lot of people do is trade crypto in their personal accounts, and they may have a company which does advise you when it comes to crypto and so forth. I know there are a lot of developments. I know DMCC have an offering for crypto, and things are moving in the right direction. Um, but as of yet, it's more trading by your personal accounts and utilize it that way, like any normal person would without a company. And if you provide any advisory services or any sort of maybe web design, wallets, that sort of thing, then you can set up a company from that perspective. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ramal. Lots of good questions coming in. Please, all in all attendees, I please encourage you to, to post any questions you want, either via the QA box. Or on the comments here we're getting some some really good questions i've got one here for you zach from simon um i own a recruitment business in the uk how easy is it to set up a dubai entity but transact business initially from the uk i'm not planning to move to dubai straight away or hire a local team until we first build up some business relationships or trading history great question and perhaps that you could give us a bit of an insight how people can set up their companies remotely and operate them remotely as well yeah, certainly a really fantastic question. So I'll start off in the initiation of, of what we would need before we could set up a company remotely. And first off, it's quite straightforward. The main requirement is that you've been to Dubai or the UAE once before on your current passport. This would need to be proven by what's called an entry stamp, which usually you would get when passing through the airport. Assuming that is that that is what, what you have, Simon, then we are very much clear to, to establish a company remotely, preferably a free zone entity, because these are much, much easier to have operationally uh, formed as well as remotely operated, as you mentioned, as your priority from the UK. Now, the actual incorporation of the commercial registration or the company itself is, is very, very straightforward. Again, as I mentioned at the beginning, we're here to make it as simple as ABC and guide you through it. The, the, the slight intricacy then arrives when you're trying to transact, because realistically, if you're going to be invoicing from a Dubai-based company, that invoice has to land somewhere. And, and as Ramel mentioned before, at some point you would need to have a bank account. And as such, you would need to have a corporate bank account as, or a personal bank account. And as such, you would need to be in the country as well as obtain a residency visa and an Emirates ID document to, to actually get that. So the, the transaction from the UK, if you're going through the, the Dubai entity or the UAE entity by invoicing, Maybe a bit trickier, but the formation of the company is very, very straightforward. Again, of course, reach out to one of the team. Our, our emails are in the uh, in the chat. We can, of course, help you with that. But just to to, to level that off, um, the transactional side of things, the banking would be the uh, the the hurdle there. 
Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much, Zach. And, and just to echo that, please feel free to reach out to any one of the team individually. I'll have our tech team, again, put the emails in, in the chat box as well. All of our consultations here at Creative Zone are free. Uh, we have a team of over 14 business setup advisors, all are trained to understand business setup requirements and then provide suitable options. So I please implore anyone uh, who'd like to take these questions and discussions offline, please do not hesitate to reach out to us um, and one of the team uh, will respond. Um, one question here from Matt, um, which I will answer. I intend to run a hedge fund for the first time. Do you have someone who could guide in incorporating regulations and it, if it's at all feasible? Uh, yes, Matt, it is possible to set up a hedge fund here. There are two regulated financial free zones for which this sort of company setup would be well suited. There are fairly extensive requirements and regulations to set up this sort of business. And definitely that would be a question we best answer offline uh, as there's quite a bit to it. So please do feel free to reach out to me and I will run you through that. Uh, question for you, Ramel. In terms of IT consultancy, what is the main difference between mainland and free zone in terms of bidding for projects in Dubai Abu Dhabi? And then sort of secondary part of the question, in terms of arranging visas for large number of consultants, which setup is more feasible? Great question. And also, obviously, it's, it's kind of a two-part answer. So when it comes to the difference between sort of a mainland license and a free zone company, I think if you're working with government entities, semi-government entities, if you're working, say, for instance, a lot of clients that are in Dubai, if you're looking to have an office space, particularly with the second question with a lot of staff, a mainland company would be more suitable. So free zone companies are more suitable for maybe companies that are operating abroad, um, that are operating a small business with a low amount of people that are happy to work remotely without an office space. Um, that would be where I would look at, and particularly if they're looking to work with private sector companies. If you're looking for an establishment that gives you a bit more flexibility with who you can work with, where you can get your office space, how many visas you're out to get per company, then a mainland company would definitely be more suitable. What, what happens a lot of the time is if you're, say, for instance, a new IT consultant, it's a one person company and you're just getting started. A lot of the time we would advise and, and the client case is that they get a free zone company. It's cost effective, very, very straightforward. But a lot of the time, two or three years down the line, once they've grown their team, they have a few more staff joining them. Um, they work with bigger clients. They then go in to get a mainland trade license because they now want a presence. They now want an office space. Um, so both options are very viable. It just depends on what sort of establishment that you want to, to have and, and how much money you want to spend. Also, banking is easier with a mainland company as well. So that's a headache that you can kind of remove with going with a mainland trade license. Um, but every, everyone's situation is different. Um, and I think I answered the question with regards to the amount of visas that you can get. I think the mainland license gives you much more flexibility because the bigger your office space, the more visas you can get. I think the kind of rule of thumb is every square, 80 square foot of space, you can get an extra visa. Um, so that's where you'll be able to get the most visas for the trade license that you have. Excellent. Thank you very much, Ramel. And uh, Saif, who, who asked that question, please feel free to reach out to Ramel and he'll be happy to, uh, to discuss further. Um, next question for you, Zach. Investor visas, can these be processed remotely if I'm overseas or should I be present there? And the second part of the same question, can a free zone license lease retail space in the mainland? Great question. I'll address the first one initially. So there are certain parts of the residency visa process that can indeed be done virtually or remotely rather from certain jurisdictions. Again, some allow for it, some don't. It depends on a base to base. Happy to discuss this offline for your particular situation. Um, but we'll go with the assumption of an option potentially of doing the, the most possible remotely. This would be what applying for what's called an e-visa. Now, usually it's the free zones that primarily offer this, and it's the initiary, an initial process of the visa application. Um, it'll take about one week to, to a week and a half to do, but realistically after that, that's the most we can do remotely. The reason being is when it comes to the Emirates ID, which is an ID document locally here, it requires medical tests and biometrics, which obviously, of course, you need to be present for. So that is, that is realistically the most we can do remotely that week and a half. Other than, other than that, I would, I would say plan to, uh, to be in Dubai. Now, in terms of the, the timings to be in Dubai, we can structure this according to, to when your, your, your travel plans are. We have full flexibility on that and, and, and of course, can discuss that. Um, now, could you, sorry, Alistair, could you re reiterate the second part of that question? 
Uh, yeah, it was, um, where is it? Can a free zone license lease retail space in the mainland? Yeah, so usually not a possibility, unfortunately. That, that's the main benefit of going with the mainland option is that you can have your physical space or um, what's called an Ajari, which is your address, um, um, your company address rather, throughout the mainland of Dubai, anywhere anywhere throughout Dubai. There are some circumstances in which you can, but these are very, very few and far between. I would say for a broad brush statement, no, you would need a mainland license to do anything physically space-wise in, in the mainland. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much, Zach. Um, Ramel, back to you, and, and perhaps uh, I'm going to broaden this question here from, from Osman, who has said, which zone do you suggest for a management consultancy firm? And then perhaps do you want to talk about a little bit about the free zones that we offer um, and perhaps which ones um, have good offers currently and so on? Sure, sure. So management consultancy is an activity which is very, very common. Um, so a lot of the different free zones do offer it. Now, what I would say is you're looking for a free zone that gives you obviously flexibility when it comes to requirements, depending on how many visas you want, um, that obviously where you want, what location you want your free zone. So I'll pick a couple that I would recommend for this type of setup. You've got a couple of free zones in um, Sharjah, um, Shams Media City, Sharjah Media City, and also SPC, Sharjah Publishing City. Very similar in cost, um, offer slight different benefits when it comes to the amount of visas, um, the amount of activities and so forth. But this is your most cost-effective solution, right? You can get a trade license, like I mentioned, for 8,000 dirhams for a management consultancy company um, without a visa. If you decide that you want a visa, um, the total cost will be up 20,500 dirhams. Both options are very, very similar. Good options um, uh, and very, very cost-effective. You have other free zones, not to mention Fajera, who's obviously a very well-established free zone in the Northern Emirates. A little bit more costly. You're looking at about 22 to 24,000 dirhams with a visa. And without a visa with the current promotion, it's about 11,500 dirhams. Um, if you're looking for a cost-effective Dubai option, I would look towards Maidan, um, just because very, very cost-effective, prestigious location, um, flexible when it comes to activities and the amount of visa you can get. You can get a trade license in Maidan for about 22 to 25,000 dirhams with a visa and 12,500 dirhams without a visa. Um, your other option is then to go for a mainland license, um, uh, which is also very, very cost effective. 23K without a visa, and you can get a mainland company with a co working license for 27,000 dirhams with a visa. So, very, very cost effective. It just depends on what your requirements are. You know, if you're looking to work with government entities, um, you want to have an office space, and a mainland makes more sense. If you're looking at something that's quite flexible, you can be in and out of the country as much as you want. Um, then a free zone option is better. It just depends if you feel that you want your company to be in Dubai or if you're happy to be in a Northern Emirate. Excellent, thank you uh, very much, Ramel. All really valid points. Um, we're getting lots of really good questions. We've got over 100 people connected. Uh, please, for all attendees who have just joined, please put your questions, your comments um, in the comment box or in the Q&A box, and we'll uh, aim to address them one by one as well. Our tech team have also put the email addresses of everyone on this call today. Please feel free to reach out to any one of us um, and we'll be happy to answer your questions. I've got a question here from Nikhil. Nikhil's asking, can I schedule a call with one of your uh, business setup advisors? Absolutely, you can. Um, all of our business setup advisors uh, would be happy to speak with you. So please feel free to either email us individually or you can email setup at creativezone.ae and someone will come back to you uh, within one hour. Um, next question here for you, Zach, uh, and it's quite a lengthy question, so uh, bear with me a little. Um, we will do import, export, general trading, Amazon, Facebook. The company's based in South Africa. They will import from China, Taiwan, Germany, and Canada. They'd like to send the stock goods from China to Dubai directly, directly to Amazon FBA warehouse. What sort of company setup should that type of business be? established it? Great question and, and really um, fleshed out there. Um, so the Amazon FBA is, is fulfilled by Amazon and it's incredibly straightforward, which is the good news to, to establish here. I wouldn't necessarily look towards the general trading activity because that's also on a side note considered quite a high risk activity when it comes to a bank account and you may encounter some, some slight issues. 
when you're when it comes to Amazon e-commerce as a whole, there are specific activities throughout free zone jurisdictions, which is the jurisdiction I would certainly recommend for this, that are specifically tailored for e-commerce. Um, and the, the actual sub activity is called the sale of any kind of good via the internet. So it's the equivalent of general trading without the risk with the bank account. Certainly to address the second part of that question, in terms of importing, you can get an import code with that license and import from anywhere globally. It doesn't have to be just China, et cetera. And of course, assuming the, uh, the delivery to Amazon FBA, the warehouse within Dubai, you would use a delivery partner um, or a logistics partner to, to take it to the, the warehouse. Certainly something that would fit very, very comfortably in a free zone jurisdiction, following the, the, the pricings that Ramel mentioned before, as I say, starting from about 8,000 dirhams, if there aren't any visas required. So yeah, very, very straightforward. And certainly a free zone would suit that best. Excellent, thank you. Uh, thank you, Zach. Uh, Colin Stephen, hello Colin, I hope you're well. As a broker receiving commissions against sales, what is the preferred description for an activity that is acceptable to banks, uh, DD free zone, to receive such commissions? Um, I'll answer this question. There are a couple of very generic brokerage activities, commercial brokerage, I'd say being the most popular. There's also a couple of more specific brokerage activities. So in answer to that question, and certainly what the banks like here, is for you to be as specific as possible. These broad activities, as Zach correctly said there, general trading, commercial brokerage, can throw up delays with banks. So being as specific as possible with uh, relation to the business activity will definitely help you get a bank account a lot quicker. Uh, and Colin, please reach out to me. It'd be great to catch up anyway, and, uh, and we can discuss that further. Ramel, question for you. What kind of license would be ideal for content creators who generate income online? And what would be the costs associated for the content creators? This is very, very common because we're seeing many, many more companies set up like this, whether they're living in the UAE or if, even if they're living abroad. Um, like I mentioned, obviously, at the start of the webinar, it's very um, tax efficient this country and also very very flexible something that's changed recently is that investor visa investor visa holders only have to enter the country once a year now as opposed to six months for employees um which obviously gives a lot more flexibility to clients so even clients that are living in for example portugal spain can set up this type of company very very easily now depending on what you are planning to do um i would recommend a very simple free zone um either a northern emirate free zone where you can set up in Sharjah media city especially because content creation, creation is related to media. They have some really good packages in, um, in the media sector where you can get your license for 5750. Um, you can get a license with a visa for 15,500 dirham. So very, very cost-effective solutions. And a lot of the time, these content creators are, are people that are working individually, working for different companies. So they're looking for the most cost-effective option. Um, if you're looking for something in Dubai, of course, Maidan is a very good option. Um, but I, would, I wouldn't look much further than a free zone in one of the Northern Emirates, um, whether you're in the UAE or outside of the UAE for that sort of business, because it's online, right? You don't need a presence. Um, you're not going to be sort of doing anything in the mainland. So a free zone company would work perfectly. Perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Ramal. Great, great points again. As everyone probably understanding, there, are so much, there is so much that will determine where to set up a company correctly here. And that's why consultation, getting the right advice, getting the right support from the outset is so important. This is where I think Creative Zone Excel. This is where our advisors like Ramel, Zach, myself, and the rest of our team can really add value. So again, I implore anyone to please reach out to us directly or, or via our landing page uh, which is in the comments box. Uh, next question for you, Zach. Is management consultancy corporate service provider considered a high-risk activity, and is it difficult to open a bank account? Great question. And as, as you touched on earlier as well, Alistair, it's, is these generic activities can pose an issue with banks. Now, the actual company formation will be perfectly fine. These are, these are very common companies to form. But the likes of management consultancy uh, general trading are going to to encounter some difficulties with banking. Again, of course, we can guide you through the the banking process. We have a dedicated banking team for this. But what we would ideally like to do is advise you on on a specific activity. So break down really what you're consulting on, what your deliverables are, and see if there's a specific activity instead we can put you under that still covers the same 
but whilst also being much more efficient in terms of getting your corporate bank account open. So to, to summarize, yes, it is a high risk. Um, it will, will account to some difficulties, but as I say, reach out directly. We can have a discussion and, and see what, what fits best. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Zach. Um, good question here, Ramel. And I guess this, this will have a fairly long answer because I think that there's sort of two parts to it, not just the business setup, but maybe an additional approval as well. What's the best free zone or best jurisdiction to set up a training institute? And is it possible to provide the services inside the country, inside the UAE? Yeah. Um, so it, it all depends on what type of training you're doing for starters as well. Um, but when you set up a training institute, I would say mainland or one of the Dubai free zones are obviously most suitable for this because you require a KHDA approval, which cannot be obtained with a free zone outside of Dubai. Um, so mainland would probably be the best option, particularly if you're looking to set up a training institute because you need a location where you can bring in students, they can come and study. And this again, these KHDA approval, it's mandatory for you to have one of these training institutes with a lot of the different training activities. Um, so it, it's, it's something in Dubai. And I would always recommend the Dubai mainland for this, um, just because you have complete flexibility of where you're going to have your license. It's seen as a more, um, more committed establishment. Um, so KHDA approval comes with fees, um, starting from 10,000 dirhams and going up, which depending on the activities and how many activities that you have. Um, but one of the key requirements for this is that you have to have a location. Um, so I would say mainland is, is only, your only real option or one of the big Dubai free zones, DMCC, um, these sort of places also have good options as well. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, uh, thank you, Ramel. Um, Zach, let's uh, come away from the questions just for a minute and let's talk a little bit about offshore company setups. I'm sure there's lots of entrepreneurs, business owners from many parts of the world that perhaps aren't familiar with the local UAE laws what structuring options can we offer entrepreneurs, business owners that we can help ring fence their assets and offer them a little bit of legal protection here in the UAE? Tell us a little bit about the jurisdictions and the products we offer surrounding that. Yeah, great question. So there are certain free zones. These would be offshore formations, as you rightly mentioned there that are specifically tailored for this exact sort of thing. These are called financial free zones. And there's three front runners of these, and they're all in, in separate, uh, separate Emirates. Dubai's would be DIFC, um, Abu Dhabi's would be what's called ADGM, Abu Dhabi Global Market. And there's also one in Ras Al Khaimah called RAC ICC. Now, the reason why these are based in free zone jurisdictions is they, it, it, they can actually have themselves separated from Sharia law into a more investment friendly UK common law jurisdiction which means that when you ring fence your assets, you know, it's in a ve very familiar jurisdiction to, to your origination, as well as holding these assets. Let's say if you, if you have an entity or you have an investment opportunity in Dubai, you can have a familiar formation with a familiar jurisdiction in these free zones. Now, these are incredibly efficient to, to establish. They are slightly more, um, more in terms of price than a standard formation as you could expect, but they're incredibly well structured to hold assets, both local and overseas. And you can also have them as a multi-purpose or a multi-faceted option if you are setting up a, a, a subsidiary or a connected company within the UAE. That means that you can have all of the accounting in a very friendly or investment friendly jurisdiction and the bank account, et cetera, whilst also being able to facilitate your local clients. And this is certainly something we can assist with um, in, in, all, in all terms. So also DIFC, ADGM and RAC ICC. So yeah, certainly do reach out and, and happy to advise on, on specific situations. As I say, there are two categories. One is a foundation, which tends to be for personal assets and ring fencing. One is called a holding company, which tends to be for a generic, I say generic loosely, holding uh, assets, shares of companies, uh, investments, th these sorts of things. So there's, there's different categories and we can certainly help. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Sir. And lots of good points there. Um, and, and I think a very important topic, as I'm sure most people tuning in uh, are aware of the UAE is certainly governed under a very different set of regulations uh, and has a very different legal framework to many parts of the world, particularly if you're tuning in from Europe, the US, the UK, um, things are governed here quite differently. And thinking about worst case scenarios is sometimes not the most pleasant thing, but, but certainly in this part of the world, it, it needs consideration, particularly when you're owning substantial assets or, or owning companies with substantial revenue. So please do get in touch with us with any questions surrounding those points. Um, Ramel, 
Creator Zone has assisted over 45,000 customers here in the UAE. We've recently expanded our horizons within the region. We've opened offices in, in Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Please tell us a little bit about our Saudi Arabia offering. Um, what are the sort of business setup options that we're offering there? And what sort of customers are you seeing expanding beyond the UAE and into Saudi? Yeah, Saudi Arabia is um, a very important market for us, as well as Qatar. Um, but in terms of Saudi Arabia, it's a huge market. Firstly, a lot of people have been trying to get into Saudi Arabia for a very, very long time. Everyone knows it's a huge landscape. There's a lot of business to be had there. And also probably underdeveloped in comparison, say, for instance, the UAE, that can be in some sectors a little bit more saturated. Um, and this comes with setting up a company in Saudi Arabia, which is, I would say, a, a lot more complicated than setting your company up here in the UAE, just because the experience and, and the multitude of options that you have in, in, in the UAE. Saudi Arabia doesn't yet have an active free zone. So there's only really one real way to set the company up, and that is by MISA, um, which obviously utilizes local involvement, um, which comes at quite a cost effective, um, a, cost, a costly price, but it's definitely worth it when it comes to doing business in the UAE. A lot of Saudi clients, I would say, and businesses are no longer accepting companies from outside of, the, of, of Saudi Arabia to do business in Saudi Arabia. They want to bring a lot of the businesses in-house and start utilizing Saudi Arabian companies. So we're seeing a lot of the big companies that we're working with here in the UAE that have been working in Saudi Arabia for many, many years, um, that transitioning and getting their office set up in Saudi Arabia to one, obviously, getting the business from different government entities and so forth, but also not, I wouldn't say cut out the middleman, but stop utilizing local companies for different services when they're giving them a huge share in the profits when even though the cost of setting up a company can be in excess of 90,000 dirhams, even in their first two free transactions, they're making the money back that they will be utilizing by utilizing third parties in Saudi Arabia. Um, so a huge market for a lot of people. And, and one of the key factors in Saudi Arabia as well is you're not just going to set up a company in Saudi Arabia and that's it. You have to have an existing company which has a certain amount of um, time duration and they wanna see that this is an operational company. They're not just letting anyone bring a company into Saudi Arabia, but there are a lot of benefits being there. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ramel. And as you correctly said, it's an exciting time um, in Saudi Arabia. And certainly we're helping a lot of our existing customers here in the UAE expand as well. Zach, if you would, with a, with a quick summary on Qatar, I know you're, you're, you're very much involved in our Qatar offering. And very recently, we opened our Qatar office this year. Please tell us a little bit about Qatar setups, because I know it's a little bit more similar to the UAE in terms of your options. Yeah, certainly. I would think of, of Qatar, if you were comparing the three options between UAE, KSA and, and Qatar, I, I would put Qatar in the middle, where KSA realistically only has one jurisdiction called the MCI, the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Obviously, the UAE has a multitude of different jurisdictions. Qatar is in the middle there. It has four different free zones, as well as a one mainland jurisdiction called, the, again, the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Now, where it relates to the UAE, which is a lot of, uh, which, which draws a lot of positivity from those looking to do business in Qatar, is the free zones are all 100% ownership. Um, so the, the whole structure, et cetera, which covers a vast amount of activities, thousands and thousands from, from service based to, to trading, et cetera, would be covered under 100 percent ownership, which is fantastic. Now, there are certainly, of course, uh, certain business activities that may need to go in the mainland, such as likely uh, in Dubai, for example, that we've been discussing on this call. Again, the benefit is it's, it's incredibly similar to the UAE in terms of formation. Um, just to give a summary of the free zones available, the trading entity is called QSA, Qatar Free Zone Authority. This builds up the sea and the airport in, in Qatar. And of course, this would be mainly aimed at any logistics company trading. They also do cover e-commerce, though not particularly common, as you can imagine. But it just gives a more hands-on approach when you're directly connected with the ports. If you're looking to import, etc., you are on hand to do so. The other jurisdiction that is to note is QFC, Qatar Financial Center. Now, they have a, a regulated and an unregulated category of, of licenses. Trying not to get too much in detail, but the, the regulated is very similar to what we just spoke about in DIFC and these, these financial free zones. If you're wanting to set up a, either an advisory on, on, let's say, financial investment advisory, but the unregulated is where this really shines in the fact that they have a vast amount of activities such as generic consultancy, service-based software companies that can be formed there with incredible ease. And it's very, very much so 
similar to to the UAE um, in both terms of, of price point, though a little higher, but but not to, not to the extent of KSA, but also ease of use and, and familiarity. So certainly a great jurisdiction. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, uh, thank you, Zach. Um, we have a question here from Lee. Uh, Lee uh, asked a question. Uh, he's been held up in a meeting. Will this session be recorded? Yes, Lee, it is all uh, recorded and will be released on our social media channels um, within a few hours of concluding the session today. Also, we have previous sessions on our YouTube channel as well. We run a series of webinars. We, we look to run them sort of bi-monthly on various topics. We've done several on business setup. We've done some on Saudi Arabia and some more specifically on, on mainland setups as well. All are available via our YouTube and other social media channels. Um, and our tech team will, will put some links in there for ease of access into the comments box. Um, we're coming towards the end of the session. So many great questions. I apologize in advance if we're not able to answer your question directly. Uh, the email addresses of all of us are on or inside the chat box. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to one of us directly, or you can reach out to us a bit more generically through the landing page that our team have put the details in as well. Uh, Ramel, a question for you. When we set up a company in Dubai, can we apply for an investor visa for the shareholder? Can you please discuss uh, regarding the investor visa and the golden visa? Um, and perhaps discuss what are the differences between the two? Yes. So anyone that sets up a company here in the UAE, um, depending on the free zone, because some free zones don't actually have an investor visa or an employment visa. They have one type of visa. But most free zones will have either an option for an investor visa or an employment visa. The investment visa is for someone who owns the company or has a share in the business, um, which is a standard process, right? You get a license and say, for instance, Charge Media City and a lot of the other free zones that you're working with. If you own the company, you get a, a, an investor visa for that matter. Like I mentioned, there's a lot of benefit of having an investor visa, mainly the fact that you only have to be in the country once every year. So particularly for international companies um, or people living abroad, they don't have to travel so much back and forth to Dubai. Um, when it comes to a golden visa, it's slightly different because it's not attached to a company. It's attached to the individual. Um, and this can have different factors that are involved. One is wealth, um, property, um, obviously expertise. If you sort of have a, you're in a field of expertise and you're seen as someone who adds a lot of value to the country, that can help you get a golden visa. There's a pre-approval process for any type of golden visa that you have. So firstly, you apply, um, go through the approval process. Once you're approved, that's when you can acquire a golden visa. So a lot of my clients have set up companies, they've got their investor visa and six months down the line, they sort of told me, look, I have, I've been, obviously I've, I've applied for a golden visa or can you apply for a golden visa for me? And we've been successful. So they've just changed over from an investor visa to a golden visa. Another thing um, to mention, which gets asked a lot is once you do have a golden visa, not just yourself can get the 10-year visa, also your family can get a 10-year visa. So this is a, a question that gets commonly asked, and it's a, it's a huge benefit for yourself and the family. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that, Ramel. Um, question here, do you service Oman as well? Uh, we don't directly service Oman, but we do have plenty of our partners that can help. Uh, so please do get in touch. We'd be happy to connect you with someone who can assist. Uh, lots of great questions coming in. Uh, let's go to this one here for you, Zach. Uh, which is the best free zone to set up selling dried and fresh fruits and vegetables? And are there any bans on food sales? Great question. So realistically, for, for food sales, food and beverage as a whole, particularly dried products, it's, it's relatively straightforward in terms of licensing. I suppose the more focal point that you would need to, to, um, to envisage on would be the importing process. So if, again, on a license, we'll cover that shortly. This can be perhaps one of the free zone jurisdictions, assuming because of a, a piece of legislation, assuming that you use delivery companies to take it to your clients, or if you're doing B2B to your to these stores directly. Now, the reason being that you need to do so is that there's a piece of legislation in companies law that states that free zones, the three zone companies cannot transact in the mainland. And delivery to customers is of course considered transacting. So if you want a, a free zone jurisdiction for the low cost and also the 100% ownership, all of these sorts of things that we've discussed on this call, 
you would need to, to, to keep that in mind. Now, what I mean on the importing side of things is that if the, the exact product is not already sold, so there's not the identical barcode, which is what, what happens when you sell goods here, they're given a barcode. If it's not already sold here, you will need to register these goods, these, these foods, before importing them with the import authority. Now, whilst we can advise on how to do this, of course, we can advise on anything realistically in the, in the, um, in the corporate world, I suppose, in the UAE. Um, you would still need to submit things like samples of the food, et cetera, if you wish to do so, if it wasn't already sold. But on a, on a license perspective, it's, it's very, very straightforward. It really depends on those two things, delivery and also uh, importing. <clears throat> Excellent. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Zach. Question here from, from Norman. Hi there. Is it possible to do the business setup process yourself? Is it not recommended? Um, Norman, I, I would strongly advise you at least speak to us before uh, going ahead directly. You can, of course, approach the licensing authorities directly, but the whole value proposition is create his own, take away the bureaucracy of doing that and let you concentrate on your business, which is an entrepreneur or a business owner, what you should be concentrating on. Doing it yourself will take three, four, five times as long. Um, and it will be a lot of running around from various departments, not just for your company setup, but for the immigration, the visa processing, the bank accounts, the tax accounting, tax and accounting advice and support. All of this is what we offer. Um, and as I said, our, our consultations are free, no obligation. So please do get in touch with us. We'd be happy to, to discuss your options. Okay, we're, we're coming to a close. Lots of great questions that, that unfortunately we're not going to get to all of them. Um, we'll start by with some closing comments. Um, we, I think we've had a good discussion today on the various business setup options that are available. Um, Ramel, what are your what are your closing thoughts? What what do you think uh, the UAE um, offers investors, entrepreneurs, business owners, and um, and why should they get in touch with us today? Yeah, no, it's, it's been a, it's been a great webinar. Some really good questions that. Um, are relevant to a lot of different people. I'm sure people are listening and, and getting asked the questions that they didn't even ask. Uh, they didn't ask the questions. Um, but the UAE as a whole is a market that we've obviously seen in, in this year's results and the amount of people that have sent up companies in the UAE, that this is a, is a booming market and it hasn't slowed down due to COVID. It's only growing and, and becoming more of a business hub for the, for the whole of the region, not just the region, but globally. Um, a lot of our clients are coming from all over the world. Um, like I said, we've got people from South Africa, from Europe, UK, um, India that are on this call. Um, and what I would say, something you mentioned in your last call, Alice, that our consultations are free. So if you do have any questions, you do want to have a little look into why it's worth setting up a company, it's definitely good to get in contact with us and ask our advisors um, that, that can assist you. We have advisors from all over the globe, from UK, from the Western Europe, India, America, Chinese speaking um, employees. So we can service anyone. Um, so making that call and sort of getting along your, maybe perhaps your entrepreneurial journey or developing your company and, and taking it from a different country to another country, it's, it's a great time to do it, particularly with the, the summer coming around. So it's a time to start working on getting the company formation set up. And um, so when it comes to September, October, when the weather does get a little bit better, um, you're ready to do business. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Ramel, and, and great points again. All of our emails are in the chat box, our landing page as well. Um, so please do get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, Zach, your, your closing comments. Yeah, certainly. I think Ramel uh, summarized it, it quite well there in terms of how we can do it. I think if, if, they, the, if you've been listening throughout the whole call as well, I think we've addressed a huge amount of, of possibility here. And there's a very, very good reason why Dubai and the UAE was, was top ranked in, in entrepreneurship um, for, for this year and last year. So it's, it's incredibly attractive. There's a lot of opportunity and we're happy to help you along your journey. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, that brings us to a close. Uh, thank you all for attending uh, another Creative Zone webinar. Um, it's been a great discussion. Thank you for everyone tuning in across the globe. Thank you for all your brilliant questions. If you have any further questions, require any further advice or support, please do reach out to us uh, as uh, uh, the speakers have just said there. All our consultations are free and under no obligation. So please don't hesitate to get in touch with us today. Now is the time. It's never been a better time to set up in the UAE. Um, and we look forward to hearing from all, uh, all of you soon. So thank you, Ramel. Thank you, Zach. And thank you, everyone. And, and we look forward to seeing you on the next webinar. Thank you, Alistair. Thank you, everyone else. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.